Well, I'm going barbel fishing tomorrow. I'm heading up the river. I'm going to just below Iron Bridge at a place called Coalport, and I'm going to try and catch some nice barbel. I'll be looking for five, six, seven, eight pounders around that mark. If I can catch a 10 pounder, I'll be over the moon. And um, I'm really looking forward to it. The weather's good. There's a little bit of water gone into the river, uh, which has brought the oxygen levels up, dropped the temperature down, looking really good for tomorrow. And all I've got to do is put some pellets into a bucket, put some water over the top of them, let them soak overnight, and I'll be ready. Let's see if we can get some barbell. How nice is this? When people say to me, why do you fish rivers so much? Well, that's the reason. Just take a look at that. Early morning, absolutely beautiful. The reason I've picked this spot is a swim just down the bank there. It's because just down the river, about 200 yards, is some shallows. And about 300 yards that way, some more shallows, literally a few inches deep, and in between is deeper water. That's where the barbel live, and that's where we're going to fish. I'll show you one of my favourite pigs.
nice and quiet. If the Lord made the perfect barbel peg, this is it. You've got nice shallow water up there, shallow water down there, deeper water, a nice bar in the centre, a bar in the centre of the river, and over the other side of the bar, all those snags. And those just live in there. They can hide in there from predators like mink or otters or cormorants, and they just sit in there and just come out, and as the food passes down, my boilers and my pellets, they come out, bump, desi's in. Let's get down in the peg and put some bait in. Okay, if this is the only thing you learn from this video, then this will make you a better angler. So many people who work all week uh, and, 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 and only fish once a week, and I don't blame them, they can't fish quick enough. So in other words, they rush out the car, they rush down to the peg and sling in straight away. Catch a fish straight away, they might catch a barbel straight away, but it ruins the peg. How many times have you been when you say, I had one, one barbel or one chub, first chuck, then I had nothing else, the peg died. I want to tell you a reason why that is, is if you think about it, just imagine if you wanted to, 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 to shoot a deer and the deer was up in the trees but all the way to the trees, you were shooting rabbits. So you were going bang, 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 bang. You wouldn't see any deer, would you? Right? So what we're going to do today to catch those barbel, those barbel might be seven, eight, nine, ten pound. They're a lot older than the chub, a lot wiser. They've survived otters, they've survived minks, they've survived spawning, they've survived floods. They're a bit cuter. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this feed in first and we're going to attract the rabbits. Once we've attracted the rabbits and the rabbits are all happy, the deer will come, the barbel. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. This is the mix, remember, that I mixed last night. And look at it now. Overnight, it's turned into my Desi's Christmas pudding. Just look at this. Beautiful. And this is what we're going to put in the swim. And what we're going to do, we're going to put it in the swim for about an hour. One hour. Yes, you've got to sit here one hour, just feeding. And what will happen? All the chub and all the dace and all the perch will all come into the swim and nothing's being caught, nothing's being hooked, nothing. And they'll be happy. And happy fish are catchable fish. So when those are happy, have a guess what turns up? The barbel. The barbel come in and you start having barbel. And that's what it's all about. The most important thing, people talk to me about what hooks to use, what line to use, what rods to use, reels. Yes, they are important, but you take it from me that feeding the swim and treating the swim right at the very start of the day is the foundation. If you start the day off right, if you start the day off by spooking the fish, you're always trying to fight your way back. If you start the day with confident fish and you just build your swim slowly but surely, you can catch fish all day long. That's why I catch so many fish and that's why I catch big fish because I actually feed the swim feed the swim without lines and without me being in there. So that's what I'm going to do now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some balls in. Proper ground bait catapult. And I'm going to put those in the swim, not in a tight area, down the swim, you'll see me put one, two, three. And I'll show you with the rods how we'll know where the fish are. But let me put the bait, let me put the bait in first. Look at those chub and those dace eating the... Do you see it as it went in? Chub, dace, everything eating, the, eating it. Watch again, there he goes, look. Just watch them eat the water. Look, here they come. Look at them, whoa. See, that's chub, dace, everything. Now that's what we're feeding. Fantastic. Then what I'm gonna do then, is I'm gonna put some, some boilies in. And you can hear those sound. Hear them? Raining food. Perfect. 
Now, having put the bait in, a decent amount of bait, but not a great big heap, I've probably got about five kilos, four or five kilos of bait with me, and I'll feed that through the course of the day. But what I'll keep doing is keep firing the bait in every 10 minutes, every 20 minutes or so. And every time you put bait in, you ask a question. You ask the fish a question. Sometimes they go, I ain't having it. Sometimes they might have one. Sometimes they might have the lot. But then you put it in again, you ask the question. And sometimes they may keep saying no 20 times, but eventually they will say yes and you'll start catching them. But if you put the bait in all together, you're asking the question once and the, the, the bait dissolves away, few fish eat it, and you ain't got a clue how much bait is in. How much bait is in now? I know that the minimum amount of bait I've got in the swim is what I'm putting in at that time. If they eat the lot, I know what I'm starting on. So I'm not putting in a huge amount of bait in, I'm gonna feed the bait all through the day, as you'll, as you'll see me do. The first thing I set up, and I learnt this many years ago, and I think it was Dick Walker. I'm a guy, you know, sort of a disciple of Dick Walker. And uh, Dick Walker said years ago, the first thing to set up is your landing net. It's no good to start to fish, and then all of a sudden you'll get decent fish first off, and you've got no landing net set up. The amount of times I see people do that. So I've got a decent sized landing net. This landing net will probably land 16, 17 pound barbel. I'm probably expecting six, seven, eight pound barbel today. But you just never know. You know, the amount of people who said, Des, what you're expecting to catch a whale with that net? And then all of a sudden, later that day, they go, Des, 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 can you bring your net? I've got a fish and it won't fit in my net. That's clever, isn't it? So here, I've got a decent net. Modern day materials which don't damage the fish and big enough to land a double-figured barbel and a long landing net handle. Look, special river one, this one's a gardener. Long landing net handle that don't need that long today, but it's quite, it's quite shallow in the side, so you have to net them out there. So there's the landing net. That's the first thing up and ready to go. So if I get a fish, I'm ready to go. Okay, the next thing is, I don't always use a rod pod. If I'm using a, a, a single rod setup, I'll use rod wrists. If I'm fishing close in, I won't use these. But being as we're fishing the far side, I want the rods up high so there's less line in the water, which I'll explain uh, again just a bit later. So I'm using a pod just to hold the rods up high so I can get the line out of the water. A number of companies make these, and they're very, very, very useful. What I've done at the start of the day also, is I've just put two bricks there. Sometimes I put twigs or whatever, it just so happens at Coldport, there's lots of broken crockery from the, the pottery works. So what I've done is I've put a couple of little tiles right at the level of the water. So through the day, I can keep an eye if it's dropping or coming up, because there is water up uh, upstream coming in. There is rain in Wales, so I'm expecting water to come down. I'm hoping that, that it rained yesterday afternoon. I'm hoping that we'll be in and out before it comes up. Really don't want to be fishing on a river coming up. I like to be fishing on a river that's steady or it's come up and it's going down. But those two tiles will tell me what's happening with the water. The gear couldn't be simpler. It really couldn't. It's a standard pound and three quarter rod. I've got no quiver tip on the end because I use a straight tip because that's going to help me hook the fish, which I'll show you the bite in a, bit, in, in a moment. Standard bait runner reel. 100 companies make these. You just buy the one you want, but it's a bait runner reel. It's a 12 foot rod. I like a 12 foot rod because again, it's high out the water and it's taking the line out the water, which I'll explain again at a later date. I'm using 12 pound clear line 
12 pound clear line. These are powerful fish. Don't go on six and eight pound. Start on 10 minimum, 12. I sometimes use 15, 16 pound if I'm near stags. So it's 12 pound main line, and then it's 10 pound fluorocarbon. I'm actually um, down to, uh, uh, sometimes I use a 12 and a 12, but I'm down to 10 just to give me a chance because the water is clear. I will come down to eight if it's in very open water to get a bite. Bead, standard shock bead, swivel, running link, very simple running link with a three ounce flat pair ledger on there. And then this is important, the hook length, a lot of people that come into barbling use very short hook lengths. Don't, because that line is coming into the water, virtually vertical. So you want to get away from that. The fish will keep hitting that. So what you want is a, a length of line. This is the minimum I'm using. It's only because I'm fishing near snags that I'm only using two foot. I will use up to six foot, yes, six foot of hook length to get it away from that lead, to get it away from that line. You're not, you're not uh, carp fishing where the line is flat on the deck. This is coming down into the water vertical and you want to get that bait well away from that if you can. And on the, on the front end, there you go, as, as easy as it gets. A standard hair rig. When I say standard, I make it quite long because I don't want to hook the rabbits. I don't want to hook the rabbits, I want to hook the deer. In other words, I don't want to hook the chub, the small chub and the dace that's knocking the bait about. They will try to pick it up and they will pick it up and because it's a longish hair, they'll pick it, they'll give me knocks on the rod, but they won't hook themselves up. When the barbel comes along, he comes over like a carp, sucks it in and he hooks himself. So every time a chub pulls it, if it's nice and close, you've got a chance of hooking those chub. You've got a chance of spooking the barbel. I don't want to do that. I just want to catch barbel. And to be honest, with a long ear, if you do a kachub, it can be four, five, and I've had them well over six pound deer. I don't mind them. Those are the kind of uh, rabbits I don't mind shooting. There you go. It's a size uh, 10 hook. It's a, a, it is a twister. I'm gonna mention the hook. Uh, I do use Nash twisters, love them. They're nice and sharp, nice and strong. Perfect. Standard hair rig tied, um, a knotless knot. And that's it folks, that's as easy as it gets. There's no, no need for any complications. The more complicated the get on a river, the more chance you've got to get tangled in snags. Remember, as um, uh, the, the fa famous Canadian uh, um, Haith Brown wrote, a river never sleeps. And that's right. When you fish a swim the one day, the next day it might have a tree in there. As soon as you hook them, you want them out. You've got to not mess around. You don't want fancy rigs with loads of things on to get tangled in, in trees and branches, or whatever you want it nice and simple. It don't get no simpler than that. Let's chuck it in, see if we can get a bite. Now, let me just explain the bite. We're gonna get, if you look at the tip here, you're gonna get twitches like this, bump, 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 bump. That might be chub, just picking the bait up like I explained. Or you might get a big bang, there's a barbel with a pectoral fin hitting the, hitting the line. But when you do get a take, be no doubt if you think, I think I might have had a barbel bite. If you think you've had a barbel bite, you ain't had one. This is a barbel bite. When it pulls it over and nearly pulls the rod in. Many's the time I've been walking along the bank and all I find in a barbel swim is a pair of trainers. That's where the bloke's been pulled out of his trainers into the swim. That's the bite when he can pull you down. When I'm taking young kids fishing, I have to hold them the back of the, the, back of the, the collar so they don't get pulled in. That's the bite look. Whoa, straight up, really exciting. Nearly pulls the rod in. That's what we're gonna get today. I do a lot of guide days in a year, probably 50 or 60 guide days. And the biggest weakness I find with people, and it is a weakness, uh, is the casting. People cast to a spot, take a fish, and then might not even get to that spot again for another couple of hours. Casting accurately, I can't, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get it on the spot. If you think that's where the fish are, unless it goes there, you must reel in and put it back in. I'm not using a feeder because I don't like keep chucking a feeder in. I'll explain that when I keep putting the bait in. I, but I'm, I'm making sure those fish today will be over the far side. That's the east side of the bank. 
as the sun comes up, it'll come over the trees. It's quite dull today, but normally it'll come over the trees and it'll become very bright over this side. And the fish over this side will naturally migrate over to that side. So the east side becomes a better side in the summer. So I'm starting off there. I'm not catching fish at my feet, so I'm playing them in the shoal. The fish are over there in the snags. They're in the shade on the east side of the river, away from, at the, 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 in the shade. So that's where I'm gonna cast. So, you know, make sure it's accurate. This is where I'm gonna cast, right in to the pantry. Look at that. There we go. And another one, just a bit farther upstream. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check on setting the clutches. Always check every time. Nice stiff clutch. So I'm gonna be playing those fish fairly hard, especially when they're over on that, on those, uh, those on those snags. I don't want the clutch pain zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
Oh God, barbel, barbel, barbel. Oh, take. This is a barbel. I wouldn't think it's a big barbel, but it's a, it's a barbel. It's actually drizzling, and getting faster all the time, the rain. But hey, the fish are biting. Five pound chub first chuck and then, then this barbel. It's not a big barbel. Not a big barbel, but it's a barbel. It's the first barbel of the day. Look at that. There he comes. Look at his golden. To me, to me, one of the sights of a fisherman in this country. As it comes up in the water, watch it come up. Look at that and the gold fins. Look at the gold fins. Oh, look at the bend in the rod. <laughs> he doesn't like that, does he? Cool. And that's why people travel down here to get that bend in the rod. Look at that. I love the colours. The colours of those fins. Look at the colours of the fins. Come on. No, he's not ready yet. He's not ready yet. He's not far away. He's not far away. Oh, come on. Come on. Look at this. Whoa. Oh, just when you think you've got them beat. Even a, a moderate, moderate sized fish, a modest sized fish like this. Look how he's fighting. I mean, what can, you can't expect any more from a fish. Come on. Come on. Such a strong fish. Such a strong fish. Cool. <laughs> Come on. They are such a strong fish. Can you expect anything more from a fish than this, eh? What a scrap of this fish. There you go, in the net. Cool, blimey. That was an incredible scrap, hey? And just a modest fish, probably about, I don't know, six pounds. What a beautiful fish. Let me show you this up close. Well, there is the first barbel of the day. What a beautiful fish they are. Magnificent creature, the barbel. A beauty. See those barbels? Look at those barbels when they come down. That's how they find the food. A wild fish from wild waters. I'm going to put him in the net and then I'm going to put him in the water like so. Like so. And then I'm going to put him like that to recover. He's all ready. He's all ready, ready to go really. But don't let him go yet. Because what can happen? He can shoot out there in this lovely still water shoot out into the current, turn over and die. That can happen any time. But what I'm going to do is let him recover for about 10 minutes and then off he goes. What a start. First two chooks, baited up, first two chooks, a five pound chub and a nice uh, uh, bowl about five and a half, six pound. What a way to start. You see, feeding the peg will keep constantly feeding the peg, but without doubt, the way to catch fish is bait up an hour, sometimes two hours before, get them confident. Get those, rabbit, those rabbits confident and you'll catch the deers. That fish He's ready to go back now. I don't hold him in the water. Keep stroking them, keep stroking all the, the slime off them. Keep pointing them upstream. I don't, I just put them in the net, pointing upstream, let them recover all by themselves. There you go, that one's ready. He'll go away, look at that. There you go. You can always tell when they've got plenty of going. They always splash it in the face just to say sodger. And that one did, brilliant. Gone to fight another day. Brilliant. I'm really, really pleased.
another chub. Another beautiful chub as well. Look at that. Look at that for a chub. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Can't knock this. Can't knock this. That's a good, good chub. Look at that. Look at that. Look at this for another chub. Look at that. Crikey, look at the mouth on him. Boof, get in there. Cool. Oh, that is fabulous fishing. Fabulous fishing. We have to barbel, but hey, I don't knock chub that size. That, that's another fish around about the four pound mark. Let's all look it by the water there. Very spawned out of the fish. Hey, look at that. That mark is probably from uh, spawning where it's damaged itself against the, the bushes and the, and the rocks where it's uh, in the gravels where it's been spawning. Let's put him back. There you go. Oh. <laughs> hey? Four pound chub, five pound chub, nice barbel. Hey, and why do I come to the river? There you go. Let's keep feeding. We'll get those barbel in a bit. I think this is one of the secrets that I've got that catches a lot of my fish. Over the last about five years, I've caught sort of probably around about 1,600 fish for people on guide days and plus my own personal fish and I fish exactly the same and I really rate this mix. Um, I started using it uh, in the feeder after I saw Phil Maguire and uh, Stuart Jessup uh, and they showed me how to, to mix it. And I've just added a few little things, you know, you, you always add a bit on. And all I do is I get normal carp pellets, about four mil in there. Scretton's pellets or coppins, it don't matter, any, any uh, common carp pellet. And then what I've got is I've got some Nash six mil Scopex pellets, which are the same flavour as the boilers I'm using. Got those. So what I do is a 50-50 mix, there's about four kilos in here so what I do is I put two kilos of each and then what I do is I put half a pint of cooked hemp in really like hemp uh, in, in any uh, viable mix I've started putting it again in the last two years I've put that in and then what I've done this year and it really makes it a nice tight mix is I use that Stevie, uh, Stevie Ringers, it's called Ringers Sticky Pellets. It's not meant for this, it's meant for method mix. And all I do is in every mix, I put about a quarter of a bag in, which is a, a, like a quarter of a kilo, something like that. And I mix it in with them and it makes them really sticky and, and puts them together. So although you've got, you're sticking it together, look, you've still got those individual pellets, right? So it makes a bit of a pudding but look at these, you've got the individual pellets. So when it hits the water, a few drop off, a few drop off, and then when it hits the bottom, just like a feeder, they're just breaking up on the bottom. And you've got hemp going farther down the swim, you've got the four mils going a bit farther down, then you've got the six mils not travelling so far down. So you've got this spread of bait. And I remember uh, Lawrence Breakspear saying to me years ago that you only need one little pellet or one piece of hemp to get down into a barbel, he just sniffs it and up he comes to find out where the source is, where they're going in. And when he finds them, you'll catch him. That's my secret pudding mix.
the swim seems to have gone quiet after that couple of chub and I lost a chub as well and um, had a barbel. Um, what seems to have happened, the swim's gone quite slow. I had a pike take a, a fish as I put the, the, the pudding in. Uh, a pike took on the top, quite a good pike, double figures obviously, uh, it looks about, you know, sort of might have been even mid doubles. So uh, the swim, what I've done now is if you look, my, my leads and the bait are stuck in the, uh, in the rings and what I've done is I'm, I'm resting it and all I'm doing is I've took the lines out, I'm putting a bit of pudding in and I'm putting the uh, pellet and the, um, and the boil is in and I'm going to do that now for about half an hour, three quarters of an hour just to repair the peg. A few things have happened. I've caught a couple of fish, three fish. I've put them back, put them back. They've probably gone out there. Hello lads, Des Taylor's here again. Oh no. So they've put the, put the helmets on and gone into the snags and, and eyed in a way. And you know, with that pike as well, uh, it's, gone a bit, it's gone a bit quiet. I've had a few liners, but it hasn't materialized into bites. Um, so what I've done, and if you notice, if you look at my rings there, what I've done is I've changed from a single bait to a double pellet and a double boily, just to, just to ring the changes a bit. So what I'm doing is repairing the peg at the moment and we'll leave that for half an hour and I'll just keep, just keep feeding for a, around about half an hour and then we'll sling the baits in. Bought the rods in, put some feed in, come up here for a bite to eat, a couple hundred yards, left the rods down there, do some uh, sausages, fill our bellies, coffee and sausage, catch another couple of barbel, go home. Does it get any better? <laughs> That's the barbel. Ooh. That's a nice barbel. That's a nice barbel. That's on those two boilies. They're a beautiful fish, aren't they? God, look at that. Fighting well, look. God, look at that. Oh. Not a monster, fought so well. But they're all good fish. Barbel are all good fish. Look at it in the water. Look at it. You'll turn up, look at that. <laughs> Feet soaked. The, uh, oh, look at that. Watch him, I'll bring him up to the surface and he'll say, no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, 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 no. 
You've got to be joking, Desi Taylor, haven't you? Look at that oily effect on the water. Absolutely lovely, isn't it? Look at him. Not far away. I'm saying that and he's probably another two minutes away yet. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, there you go. Beauty. Absolute beautiful. Look at that. Now look at the tail. See the tail chopped off? See the tail? That's a predator that's nailed it and grabbed it and bit a bit of its tail off. Beautiful. Oh, I love barbel. Look at the colours. Look at the muscle. Solid fish. Fight like hell. Look at the paddles on it. Oh. You are a very beautiful fish. Let's get you back in the water as quick as possible. What a lovely fish. Well, these are the three baits that I'm using today. Normally I only use the two. I would say that 90, 95, 97% of my fish through the year will be caught on that red boily there, which is a Frankfurter flavour, which is my own flavour and my own boily that I get made for me. And that one is Squid and Scopix uh, Nash, which is an absolute super bait for chub and barbel. Uh, but today, because it's so clear uh, and because it can be difficult in these conditions, sometimes I'll go down to a, a single pellet. And being as I'm feeding pellets all the time, I've just put on a, a, a krill pellet or a, a double krill pellet. And, and I've, had fish, I've had fish now on all these. I've had, I've had them on double, double those, double those, single those, double and single the pellets. It's just, you know, just ringing the changes, but I don't go any farther than, than that most of the year. For most of my barbel fishing, those are the three baits that I'll use. You know, I have used big pieces of meat and no doubt I will in the future, but I would say out of probably three to 400 barbel that I catch each year on my guide days and personally, I would say that I catch 95, 90% of those fish all on these baits. So it wouldn't bother me if these three baits were the only ones ever that I use. You know, along with the feeding of the, the um, the pudding, that's what I catch my barbel on. They're 12 mil boilies, and I think they're um, six and eight mil pellets. If you do it right, you can catch these barbel all day long. I do it, I do it three or four times a week. I'm catching fish right in the middle of the day. Look how bright it is now. By casting into a, an area where it's shady on that east bank, like I said, and constantly feeding, constantly asking the questions. Those weren't feeding, I just kept actually putting bait in. I kept seeing little movements, little movements, little movements, just kept putting the pellet in and look what's happened. I've asked the question and this one's given me the answer. Over it went. You see the rod tip go over, bump. 
when you're fishing up this neck of the woods, you ain't fishing for big fish. I've not come up here for big fish. You know, I take a lot of people who've never seen a barbel, never mind caught a barbel. It's the bite. It's the being here and the bite. Come on, come on. And if you come on this River Seven and do this method like I'm saying, then you will catch fish like this. Does it really get any better than this? It doesn't, I tell you. Absolutely fantastic, eh? Look at that. A River Seven barbel in prime condition. Beautiful. Hardly a mark in its mouth. Looks like it might be the first time it's caught. Let's get him back in. Put me back. Okay, let's go back. lovely to see so many fry uh, in the uh, in the river because the river's been so low and there's been no summer floods it's been really successful so far and those fish seem to be uh, getting bigger by the minute every every uh, day that I come up and every week I come up they're just slightly getting bigger there'll be all sorts there dace perch chub maybe even barbel with with, uh, with a bit of luck but you know what we need now is we need no floods now through the through the summer and uh, let them get to a size that they'll be able to you know sort of last a flood um, if they can get through the up to october november december without being flushed through on a big heavy flood then there's a chance that they'll survive and you know hopefully in the next few years we'll see a, a return of lots of chub dace and you know after 76 that was a a great year for fry and we had a few good years after that because the amount of fry that had survived and and we got lots of fish in the river and let's hope the, this year although people have moaned about the the temperatures for fishing hopefully we're going to have a good spawning year uh, the, the you know the fry are going to last and you know through the year and we're going to have a a real boom of fish in the future years Oh, that's the one. I slung that slightly up. Sometimes they go right on where the feeds hit in the water. You, you think they'll be sort of down, down below, but sometimes they're right where they sit in the deck. They're coming up because what they're doing is competing. One's trying to beat the other, one's trying to beat the other, one's trying to beat the other. Then they're slightly... You know, they're right up where they sit in the water virtually. This could be a better fish. Upset, upset, well upset that is. Keep asking the questions. There it is. Oh, oh look at that. Look at the bend of that rod. Pound and three quarters, absolutely bending it straight the way through. Absolutely magical, magical, magical days, magical days. Starting to tire now, but they don't know when they're done really. Come on, fabulous, fabulous days, Des. Hey, welcome to my office. <laughs> oh, I've had so many magical days on this river. Come on. Nice fish this is, 
Not a monster, but it's the best fish of the day. It's a beauty. Look at this. Come on, come on. Here we go, here we go. Here we go, we're not far off now. He says, you've got to be joking, Taylor, haven't you? Okay, come on then. Come on, 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 come on. <laughs> ah. Look at that. A beautiful fish. Absolutely thin perfect, scale perfect, mouth perfect, barbels perfect. Look at that. Beautiful. Let's get him back. There we go. Ready for putting back. I hope this has proved that on a morning's fishing, get up early, fish up till dinner time, one o'clock, two o'clock, in the height of the day, and I'm catching these barbel and chub. It's been a fabulous morning's fishing. Absolutely fabulous. Let's put this one back. Come on, my old girl. Here she goes, look. Look at her, fresh as fresh. What a day. You know what? I might even come back tomorrow morning. <laughs> Away you go. Oh. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous.